So starting with the week of the announcement, what was the process you went through knowing that there was an opening here? Wow, uh, a lot of emotions went into that. And I, I have to go back, uh, if you don't mind, to you know, the day before that when you know, we're playing say tournament and, and obviously your mind's on trying to win that game. And obviously if we win, preparing for one of two opponents, uh, most likely Louisville in that, in that certain scenario. Uh, so you're really in just prep mode like you normally are. And being in the tournament, the excitement around that. And once you lose that game, you know, kind of throw the scout reports out of the window <laughs> for the next opponents. And now you're just dealing with some disappointment, some sadness that uh, A, your season's over. B, you're late in Hammonds, Phil Forte, you'll never get to coach them again because uh, their career's over. Um, and, you know, get home and start to think about the next season. And you start to process what are the things we needed to be doing to get better at it. And then, you know, heck, I wake up the next morning and, and my wife and I are heading out of town, which is what we do every year at the end of the season. And then I uh, get a text message that um, we're having a meeting at three o'clock, it's like an hour and a half from now. Uh, fast forward, obviously Brad takes a job and everybody's kind of shocked. And so you go from disappointment and sadness to like, what's going on? You know, and, and don't really have an idea. So I start to think about how, how does this affect my family? You know, my wife, my, my two children at home and what does this mean for us in the immediate and long-term future? So, you know, a couple of days after that, um, I'm asked if I'd be interested in the job. And sure, absolutely. <laughs> I think I'm prepared to do the job. I think I've worked myself in a position that I could do the job really well if I surround myself with the right staff. Um, go in the interview process, really confident, feel good about my presentation. feel like I was able to convey a message and, and a clear plan for how we're going to continue to build off the momentum from last year have the players completely on board with my, my uh, vision. And um, I get offered a job less than a week later. So it was, it was a pretty quick process, but a little stressful one, but enjoyable at the same time. Now, where were you when you got told that you'd become the 20th OSU men's basketball coach? And what emotions did you experience at that moment? I was actually in Coach Holder's office. He told me face to face, uh, called me in on Friday afternoon. And, uh, and I was really excited. Uh, and wanted to try to get to my family, my wife immediately, uh, but needed to tell our players before it got out. And then I wound up not even getting to tell my wife before <laughs> she found out. Um, so it was crazy, but I was really, really excited about it. You didn't have originally a lot of time to talk to your father, but what was that moment like telling him the news? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, you know, obviously you want to get your family the information as quickly as possible. And I had like this short window of time between the announcement being made uh, or release being put out and having to go home and get back here to do some of the media photo shoots, stuff like that. So I know I had like an hour and I uh, couldn't call everybody. So I called my dad, who's like the megaphone of the family. I mean, he is the guy who can get the message out as quickly as possible. So I called him and I literally, before I picked up the phone, I got my mind, I say, hey, I got 90 seconds, okay? I just want to let you know I'm the new head coach at Oklahoma State, and, and the rest is history. He went off screaming, and I don't even know if we got to 90 seconds before I just hung up and let him go tell the world. What has the support been like for both? We mentioned you talked to the players right after you got announced. And what has the support been like for both the players and the fans since you've been named head coach? Uh, nothing but positive from, from my uh, standpoint. Uh, the players, obviously, from day one were completely on board, uh, really supportive. Uh, the relationship I have with them was really strong throughout the process, uh, even back into the season. Got really good relationships with all those guys. Uh, and even from a fan standpoint, I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of shock because it was a quick process and a lot of them don't necessarily know me personally. I'm not a guy who's out in front all the time. So um, after the initial, like, who is this guy? Uh, once they realized I was a guy who's been around, it's been very, very positive. Four years as a player, 13 as an assistant coach. Um, I understand it's early in the, in the process, but what, does, how does your role change with being uh, the head man? Well, first of all, I'm no longer a suggestion maker, right? As an assistant, you make suggestions. Uh, you try to give your opinions of why your suggestions are good. As a head coach, you, you take the suggestions and you make decisions. Uh, so now I get to stand up during the games more than, than I did before. I don't know if I'll do that, may sit down. <laughs> um, get to call the timeouts and, and make the substitutions. and. And then I get to go in the media, win, lose, or draw, and answer the questions. So. You seem to be a very player-oriented coach. Um, you, you've said in an article that you want to serve the players. Where does that mindset come from? Uh, just the way I've been raised, you know, that this game is about trying to help young men develop uh, from a basketball standpoint, from a social standpoint. 
And it's been my overriding theme is that we're here to help these guys get to the next phase of their lives. Basketball is our vehicle. It's what we do 35 nights a year uh, in competition. But I'm around these guys every day. And so my job is to help them understand what it's going to be like down the road when they're husbands and fathers and have real responsibilities, um, how to treat people with respect, how to base everything that you do in your life off good old fashioned hard work and that good things come to those who continue to be diligent in that effort. The slogan around the team has been hashtag let's work. Is there another meaning that might that some of us might not understand? Um, I mean, most of us can kind of see what that entails, but is there a deeper meaning under let's work? Uh, it's really quite that simple. Uh, it's everybody, um, you know, work is, is what we do. Uh, it's every day, it's in the weight room, it's in the classroom, it's on the court, it's in the locker room, you know, continue to work to mold what this team will ultimately be. And obviously the less part is everybody. I mean, literally everybody who touches this program needs to have a positive impact on what we're trying to achieve. Now you, you mentioned what you want this team to be. Um, last year obviously was a great or good season, but not necessarily a gate. What is the next step for Cowboy basketball to reach that next level? Well, we got to be better defensively. That, that'd be the first thing I, I would say. Um, you know, for example, we play an NCAA tournament game and play well enough to win offensively. Scored 91 points, shoot over 50% from the field. I think we were plus 20 on the rebounds. We only had like nine turnovers, some, something like that. And most of the time, if you, you tell me those are going to be the numbers mm -hmm. coming in, uh, we're going to win that game. But we weren't quite committed defensively enough. Uh, so that's something we'll have a major emphasis on uh, this spring and summer and going into next season. Now you lose Le Leighton and Phil, obviously, and then Jawan goes to the draft. Now much, uh, most of the people are coming back. Um, what are your goals slash expectations for not only yourself but for this team next season? Well, we want to try to get back to the tournament win a game. I mean, uh, that's, that's the immediate goal is to put ourselves in position, and this league does a great job of giving you those opportunities. Uh, but we want to play in front of packed houses every night. We, we tasted that a little bit. Uh, and then to taste the opportunity to go to the tournament, we want to stick around for a little bit longer. That's one of the unfortunate things <laughs> about playing in the early game. You lose, you go home that same day. It's almost like you weren't even in it. <laughs> you started the recruiting process last week. Um, for, for a young man who's wanting or considering to be the next generation, be a part of the next generation of this Cowboy family, what do you tell them? You got an opportunity to come and play in one of the elite conferences in college basketball. You have an opportunity to play in a historic college basketball program in and of itself. One that's been national champions before, one that's been to the Final Four multiple times. And if it's been done before, it can be done again. We have an unbelievably passionate fan base. We have tremendous administrative support. We have some of the best facilities in the country. Everything is here for each one of those young men to achieve all their goals from a team standpoint. And then obviously we also support their professional aspirations, as you've seen with my statements about Juwan and with Jeff Carroll, who's coming back. Um, so everything is here for them to be successful <laughs> and to play at the highest level of competition in college basketball is a unique opportunity that you can't get very many places. Stillwater, Oklahoma is one <laughs> of those places. A little interesting fact I, I saw about you, every February you practice the uh, art of discipline. Why is that skill so important to you and why that time of year? Yeah, discipline is kind of the foundation of my life. You know, dif discipline and toughness. And if you get those two things consistently, you can continue to make progress. Uh, so I try to train myself to go through something really difficult. Uh, my wife thinks it's absolutely insane. It probably is. Um, but I think if you tr continue to work on that, just like shooting, just like ball handling, it's a skill. And if you continue to work on it, you'll get better at it and you'll be able to deal with anything that comes your way.